You're in the water loop. <laughs> Waterloop is a nonprofit media outlet made possible in part by a grant from Springpoint Partners. Visit waterloop.org. This is episode number 155, Journalism for Justice. Problems of environmental justice and water equity haven't historically received much coverage by traditional media, and if they did get in the news, chances are the reporter didn't look like the impacted population. That's changing in Baltimore and around the Chesapeake Bay where a nonprofit is helping young people in communities of color to tell their stories. The Environmental Justice Journalism Initiative is discussed in this episode with its co-founders, Donzel Brown and Rona Cobell. They talk about teaching students from the city about environmental justice and how to produce stories about the issues. Donzel and Rona hope that the skills and experience the young people gain enable them to be effective advocates and potentially journalists for larger news outlets. You're in the Waterloop. Welcome to Waterloop. Going to talk about the Environmental Justice Journalism Initiative. Very excited to learn more about this endeavor. Joined by its co-founders, Donzel Brown, who is also executive director, and Rona Cobell, who is also founding editor. Thank you both so much for coming on the podcast. Uh, in a nutshell here, what is the Environmental Justice Journalism Initiative? Well, I would first say thank you for having us, and um, we're excited to speak with you. Um, so the Environmental Justice Journalism Initiative started um, with a group of friends for years. We had talked about um, the injustices that we've seen um, around particularly the city of Baltimore, but in the way that the environment is covered um, by, by media outlets. Um, and we found there's a lack of diversity um, particularly a lack of diversity in stories. We really uh, were, as you mentioned, only really been doing this for 20 months, and we've been astonished, absolutely astonished, how much support we have, how much growth we've had, um, the impacts that we've been able to have on particularly young people and the youth, um, and... Um, I really think that, you know, we have something special that we are providing to the community. Our motto is our community, our story. So we really try hard to um, make sure that the people of their community are telling the stories. And that's where Bruno comes in as the editor. Um, she works a lot with community members um, everywhere from Deal Island, Maryland, to Baltimore City, um, to uh, enhance and, and ask people what their story uh, is about environmental mm -hmm. justice. Um, and then we want to create a platform for them to tell those stories. So we've done a couple of films. Um, we've, uh, oh, no, we, I will say Rona. Or, and our, another partner for Sean have had published works in um, in several public, uh, publications, um, and it's going really well. I think hmm. um, we're growing rapidly, uh, which is kind of scary. To <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, because there's a lot of growing pains that we are going through, um, but we're going through them and, and we're doing it well. Uh, I, mm -hmm. Our mission is just to tell the environmental justice stories of people's communities where they live and have them tell the story. Um, and typically, I'm going to probably speak more on this. Um, typically, you know, journalists will come into a community to tell a story and leave. Um, and, and the real stories are the people who are suffering, the people who are losing um, uh, opportunities, people are losing health, people are losing. Uh, those people don't tell the stories. Uh, typically the journalists tell the stories. Um, we kind of want to change the 
the, the paradigm and have the people tell the stories and giving just giving them a platform to do so. Uh, so the idea is you actually, you want to tell more stories about these environmental justice issues, but have the people that are writing those stories, recording those stories, be community members, be among the impacted population. So you're actually kind of developing journalists uh, within within these communities. Maybe Rona, you could kind of talk a little bit about the operations here and how this works. Uh, yeah, so I think we're not only developing journalists within these communities, but we have two other branches. Um, we have a science branch and uh, an activism youth engagement branch. And so what we're, what we're trying to do is let people know that they're not helpless about the things that are happening to them and that they have a voice. And it's a question of how do you want to use that voice? So do you do you want to um, tell your story in a newspaper or on our platform? Uh, or do you want to uh, rail against an injustice in your community? Do you want to start a petition? Do you want to talk to your legislator? Uh, Donzel has been with the students that we've been teaching over the summer and prior to that at the aquarium. He's been really drilling into them kind of your civics 101, you know, who, who's your legislator, who's your community liaison, who do you call about problems, how do you fix problems. So I think what we're trying to do is diversify um, the, the three kind of professions that were, um, you know, kind of at the top of our list, journalism, environmental activism, and marine science. But in the process, you know, there's public interest law, there's leadership. Um, maybe somebody wants to go into being a legislator. Uh, Barbara Mikulski, of course, famously got her start as a community activist, Barack Obama also. So um, just le letting people understand how to get involved and how to tell their story and the power of telling their story and how that can bring change. And um, I just wanted to add, Travis, that our view of environmental justice is very broad. Mm. So um, a lot of people, to the extent they know what environmental justice is, they think it's um, a power plant or an incinerator or a landfill next to a black community. And it's definitely that. But there's two other pieces to that. One is the systemic underpinning that allowed uh, that particular nuisance to be in that particular place. Laws, policies, procedures, um, all those things that go into that. And then the second piece of that is environmental justice is not just about um, the things that we don't want in a community. It's also about the things that we cherish and about losing the things that we cherish. So we've been we've been talking a lot about what's what's happened to the black watermen of Maryland. There used mm. to be a lot of black watermen, and now there are very few. Why did they lose those opportunities? Why did they lose that access to the water? Um, black cemeteries being inundated with water. You know how you keep those cultural resources. So it's it's much broader than just you know the sort of typical definition of environmental justice. And um, you know we're we're trying to really educate our, our, our peers within, uh, within city government, within the, the, the Bay movement, um, about how, how and why certain things happen and what you can do to prevent them from continuing to happen. Mm. I, I'm really, I'm a journalist, right? That's, well, that's how I started out, right? I, I was a newspaper reporter and editor. I'm a journalist at heart, so I especially love what you have going on here. Um, I'm curious about that, that side, really. Like, you'll find young people or, or people in these communities and try to give them some journalism skills, teach, help them learn how to write a story or how to hold a camera or how to talk to people. I'd love to just kind of get a little insight into that. Um, our, our first foray with that was um, uh, the National Aquarium. We were part of the Henry Hall Fellowship uh, last year, uh, which is a program for Baltimore City students. There were about 30, 35 students who came to the aquarium after school, and we instituted an environmental justice curriculum where we taught them 
how to report, you know, what's your story? So one of the students lived off of Pennsylvania Avenue and he'd had sewage backups. Well, let's figure out why is that happening in your neighborhood? Um, and uh, another one was very concerned about the harbor. And, you know, so well, how did that pollution get there? What can we do about it? So we worked with them. And then um, over this summer, we worked with the community school in Remington, which is a, an extremely diverse group of students who came from, they come from all over Baltimore City and Baltimore County. So they bring with them whatever's going on in their own neighborhoods. And so we would sort of talk to them about what's happening and, okay, how would you tell that story? Um, right now, um, I'm working with uh, UMBC. I'm helping a professor there. We're doing a, a, cl a class about environmental injustice, and we're using sound to sort of, hmm. um, how do you, what are the different sounds that you hear in a neighborhood that um, has everything to make it nice, trees and river and all that, and versus what you, what, what you see and hear in a neighborhood that's uh, you know, congested with row houses, traffic and noise and no trees. And, how, you know, what are the differences in that? So I think there's multiple ways. Not every story is going to be a print story or a podcast or, or a film. Um, sometimes it might be a personal essay. There's different ways to tell the story. But we will return to the conversation in one minute after a word about our sponsor, Veruna. Water systems are facing more requirements and challenges than ever before and have to stay aware and adapt in real time. Enter Varuna. The dynamic web-based tool helps water utilities to stay resilient by identifying more than two dozen risks that are both internal and external. These include all the typical risks that systems have to deal with and also a variety of newer factors such as climate change and environmental justice. Not only does Varuna track risks, but it makes recommendations on actions to take and then changes status in response to measures the utility takes. And because public engagement is so important, Varuna provides information that can be shared with others, including customers. With Varuna, better data means better decisions. Learn more at Varuna.city and let them know you heard about it on Waterloop. Waterloop. 20 months, not a long time for this much work. That's that's incredible. And it's getting everything rolling and figuring out the formula and everything. Uh, I'm sure that you're going to start or have started trying to reach out to some media outlets in the area, right? Like the quote, legit media outlets um, to try to get some of the stuff saved out there or, or published or shared rather. Um, just curious about, about that effort and kind of if there's any reception there. So there certainly has been a lot of interest. Uh, we just had a feature in Baltimore Magazine recently on just Rona and I and, and, and Edgy as an organization. Um, but uh, the Baltimore Banner, which is fairly new themselves, um, but I think they do a good job. They've been very receptive. And I think we've had, what, two, three things published there, or quotes at least in the banner. Um, so we've done a lot of outreach um, to media outlets, and it's been extremely receptive. I, we are getting a lot more um, requests for, <clears throat> excuse me, requests for stories, requests for engagement. Um, just recently, we're in talks with the Department of Transportation. They want to expand our film that we started the highway to nowhere or disruption the highway to nowhere you can see on our website um and i think that uh we are getting a lot more attention and, and effective um storytelling more than i think we mm. expected 20 months ago mm. Maybe part of what's happening also is like these media outlets are realizing at least they can work with you all to try to find stories, even if they're not necessarily going to reprint one or broadcast one, maybe they're, maybe that's helping tune them into sources that they can go to voices in the communities. Is that kind of fair to say? Yeah, absolutely. Ronnie can expand on this, but we've gotten a number of requests to do, um, stories, uh, um, and we could, 
expand on this, Rhoda, but yeah, people are reaching out to us to tell their stories mm. at this point. Um, and it was yeah. incredible that the department, like the city department of transportation reached out to us to tell the story of the redevelopment of the highway to nowhere based mm. on our, based on our reporting and based on our film that we made. I mean, our hope, and I think it's happening is, you know, we're not, we don't want to be a newspaper, um, like to compete with the other newspapers. We have a platform to share stories that we ourselves do, that our interns do, um, and that we um, we may see elsewhere that, that we want to amplify. Um, but we're, we're, what we're hoping to provide to, to uh, media outlets are our people. Um, so we want pe- people to come and work, work with us and help them get positions at, uh, whether it's Politico or the Banner or the Post, we want them to be able to go on to those jobs and we want to give them some tools and a, a kind of a, a cohort um, that they can kind of bounce things off and rely on. I mean, I don't think this is necessarily lacking. I mean, there's a Asian American Journalist Association, National Association of Black Journalists. There's plenty of organizations out there that give people support. But I think Don can kind of attests that sometimes when you're the only person of color in a room, whatever room it is, whether it's a newsroom or a boardroom, you, you do feel lonely and you feel like you a little bit unsure of yourself. And so we want to give people kind of a, a group, a group that they can kind of bounce ideas off of and go through this experience with. So our vision is to eventually like have, have classes of interns that go and work elsewhere in newspapers and, um, you know, NPR and others can come to us and say, you know, we want, we want reporters who are interested in the environment and trained and covering it. You know, do you have someone you can send us and us, we will be able to say, yeah, we have three people. Um, what exactly are you interested in? Here are their specialties. Um, so that, that's the goal, but you know, we're, we've had a lot kind of coming at us fast. And so we haven't, finished uh laying the groundwork for all of that yet you're, you're just getting started it's 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 <laughs> it's all good i mean you know you're just getting started and it sounds like i mean you have so much happening already so many connections so many efforts happening so i i i can see you guys getting there um yeah we're gonna uh, send you an intern for Waterloop. I'm. I would love to have a follow-up conversation about that it was something i want to chat about for sure um have you looked around the country and are there any kind of similar setups in other cities or other places um, that maybe you can kind of borrow from as, as you're setting this up um, or is this, you know, something you're just kind of doing fresh? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I certainly, I spent a lot of time actually researching um, organizations around the country and speaking with them, learning best practices um, that, we can implement, but at, at, and humbly, I would say that we are the only one that is operating like we are. Mm. We are the only one that we've seen that has a mission similar to ours. Um, and the the amazing thing about our mission, and, and I think Rona and all of our cohorts, our friends, um, our board members, is that we have crafted this to be unique Right. I, I would add to that. I agree with everything Donzel said, and I would add to that that uh, the storytelling aspect I think also makes us unique. Uh, I I think a lot of environmental environmental organizations lack that capacity to tell stories. Um, they they may employ journalists like you, Travis, in their in their departments uh, to, to put out news releases and and to tell stories, but they seem to be almost afraid to tell stories that are deep into the community. And they kind of just rely on science and, and information data to get their points across. And I think it's so much more effective when you can tell the story of how a community is impacted by this or that. Um, And, 
I think one of the reasons we've had a great reception is people understand that there's this need for storytelling. I mean, that's mm. one of the reasons why science communication as a field has really uh, grown so much because they're realizing yeah. we need to put people in these stories and, and you know, that's how we're going to, people are going to care and that's why people are going to connect. And I, and I would add to that, um, a lot of our attention that we've gotten and a lot of our uh, partners with UNDC, IMET, National Aquarium, um, is science students, graduate students, and professors and scientists who are working in the field who have come to us to ask us to help them tell the story of the science because they are used to being labs, they're used to mm. being academia, and they want to have the opportunity to um, share their data to the community, share their research to the community in a way that uh, they can consume rather than a academic paper. Mm. So, uh, you know, some of the students, like I, I mentor, uh, one student, Abdul, and there's another student we work with. Um, and and I would be remiss not to mention uh, minorities in aquaculture as a partner of ours, um, run by Manny Black, um, who's doing a lot of the same work with us, um, is providing an opportunity to uh, share their science with the community and how to communicate that to the community. Mm. And... And that, that, I think that's important that the scientists are reaching out to us to tell stories yeah, to yeah. the community. Definitely, definitely. That's huge. That's a sign. Well, Donzel and Rona, uh, I'm really excited by what you're doing, again, as like a, a journalist myself, someone that cares about water and environmental justice and a Maryland native also. Um, so all, it all comes, comes together for me. I think it's great. And I can't wait to follow uh, you know, the success of the environmental justice journalism initiative. Uh, definitely encourage people to go check out your website, reach out to you, especially those folks there in that, that part of Maryland. But thank you both so much. Thank you for listening to the podcast and thank you to this episode's sponsor, Varuna. To find all episodes, sign up for email updates, and connect on social media, visit waterloop.org.